started beekeeping about seven years ago. There was a, a woman uh, in the area that was doing a hive share program and you would pay for the hive and they would bring it to your home and uh, she would take, took her and her husband took care of the hive and then I would get a share in the harvest. And that happened for about six months and then her and her husband moved to uh, West Virginia and she said, it's all yours. And I hadn't really been paying attention because I'd been working on a lot of other things, uh, but now I had to figure it out. And now I'm quite successful. I've, I think to now I have about 14 hives. You know, I have five at my home right now. One of the things I realize is that the beekeeping industry has turned into uh, a little bit of how our agricultural industry for growing food has. It's all about pesticides. Um, people don't realize that most beekeepers um, will, will put pesticides in their hives to kill off mainly what they're trying to get rid of is the varroa mite, but there's some other things, the hive beetle and things like that, that they're trying to get rid of. We've developed these bees that can't sustain themselves. Uh, so when a swarm gets away, they're used to beekeepers taking care of them, not just pesticides, but supplements and all kinds of things to make them healthier. And in, it does work to a certain extent, but what it's actually doing is it's making them weaker. Uh, the other thing that I do, uh, which is frowned upon by the Department of Agriculture, is I use wild bees. There's two different varieties of bees because um, the queens in my hives are, are naturally, uh, they are uh, fertilized naturally, so they can have up to 10 different varieties of bees in any one of these hives. And some of them have bees that look way different. Sometimes the bees are bigger, sometimes they're darker, um, sometimes they're smaller. It's just very interesting, the, the differences in the varieties of honeybees. Uh, mostly I get them from relocations or from swarms. And these wild bees are mutts. When you want to have an, uh, you know, a pet in your family, you're looking for specific traits in a dog, for instance. And so you get a purebred dog, but there's a price to pay for getting a purebred animal, and that's the health issues. They've been interbred to a point where they're not healthy. They don't live as long and they need a lot more care. It's the same thing with bees. Uh, beekeepers are interbreeding uh, bees to the point where they are just weak. To top it off, they're supplementing their diets, they're supplementing their health, they're, they're making these bees completely dependent on humans and uh, they don't function as well. And the more they treat, the more they have to treat. I don't treat at all, zero, nothing. The only thing I'll do is I provide them a home. If they lose a queen and they aren't able to do it themselves, I am able to bring fresh eggs from one hive into their hive. And so usually that can, that can do it, you know, and, uh, you know, and I manage the situation. Bees in, in the wild, and there's lots of wild bees here, normally are fairly nomadic. They usually don't stay in one spot for more than six months, but they do stay in my hives for longer. And the reason is, is because I'm giving them what I call the Taj Mahal. These boxes are exactly what they need. And I can, and I can do things uh, to kind of uh, help them without, you know, uh, managing their lives. Uh, and that's what I do. Of course, if they didn't have food, I would feed them, but I don't, I don't feed bees. You don't have to here. And if you do go to an area where they're feeding regularly and they're selling the honey, then these people are stealing the, the bees' food. Uh, and I do sell their honey, but I'm very conservative about how much I take. I usually sell out and I sold out in January, which was the quickest ever.